the Irish Song and Recitation Festival, home of song, story, and poetical proverb. You are at the Irish Roots Cafe, and I am Mick the Bridge, your host. This is one of three broadcast series here at the cafe. The other two cover Irish family history worldwide and the history of the Irish in America. So step right up to the microphone, folks. Consider calling in at 816-256-3360. Then you just speak, sing, or play your piece proudly into my phone recorder. If it fits, we will place it on the air in a future show. But remember, it's all for free and it's all for fun, and tens of thousands of our listeners are looking forward to each show. And why is that? Because every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. <laughs> Reach me anytime and be sure to read my show notes for this episode on my webpage at www.irishroots.com. Now let's move into the big back room here at the cafe and have a listen to what's being served up today. About uh, uh, you, just a little bit before I saw you out there, you were talking about people with with uh, the Irish and the music today and the dancing, and you were talking about Sean Nose uh, uh, dancing. Now, what's that? I've heard of Sean Nose singing. Yeah, Sean Nose literally means old style, so it could be old style anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the last few years, uh, the Sean Nose step dancing has become uh, revived and become popular. It had survived in Connemara and a few other places. Connemara is a place where the Shan Nos uh, singing had also survived. People like Joe Haney, you know, had. Uh, and I always think of Shan Nos, Shan Nos as uh, one person. One person, that's okay. right. So Irish singing is basically a cappella, one person. And the Shan Nos dancing is a type of solo step dancing. It, now, like in the old dancing, where people would dance on down on the floor, low uh, steps, no kicking up like the modern step dancing. The rhythm on the floor was everything. Uh, you danced to the music, enhanced the rhythm of the music with your steps. And in, you know, ages past, you know, in, in centuries past, you would take a uh, half door off and put it down on the dirt floor and dance on that. Or then people would build a small stage for, for the uh, dancers to dance. And so that's been enjoying a revival. It's something you can't completely teach because it's spontaneous, it's impromptu. A little bit like a little bit of like jazz almost. It, it has a lot of that kind of feel to it of uh, you, you have certain basics, a few basic steps for instance. Right. And you put these together Invent your own if you want. Would these steps, would they be like threes and sevens, just turned around any way you want to, or what? The, you can do that, but the, the rhythm, uh, the, the percussiveness on the floor, uh, you, you step on the floor to get that, uh, that sound. And so it's, uh, actually I generally don't have a, a hard sole shoe, not metal taps, mind you, but right. just a, a hard leather and a wooden floor. And uh, you, you get this, this tap, not, not to overcome the music, but to tap with the music. Right. And, and you do it differently depending on the tune that's being played. And it could be never twice the same. Never twice the same. That's absolutely right. Now, if somebody wanted to see that happen live, where would they go? That's difficult. Yeah. Because it's just getting into the U.S. Um, there are only about three teachers that I know of who teach this in the U.S. And I've been lucky enough to be living in the Boston where one teacher, Karen Jordan, uh, teaches, and I've taken classes from her. Right. Uh, Malden Meehan lives out in Seattle. Yeah. And uh, another teacher lives down in the Washington, D.C. area. OK. 
okay. whose name I can't remember right now. Sure. Well, we can put that on the blog. <laughs> and uh, you know, there may be a few others picking it up now to teach, but mostly, you know, you you want to take a few lessons, maybe learn a few steps, get the feel of it a bit, and then just do your own thing. Yeah, it's not intensive book learning, so to speak. It's like you hear it, you feel it, you do yeah. it. Now, Kieran and uh, Malden and another dancer in Ireland uh, have a video uh, on disc, on, on a DVD. Oh, good. Called The Twelve Steps. Yeah. Which they give you 12 steps to uh, oh, learn. Oh, so that's the easy way well, to go. Now, what was the name of those? Uh, so, yeah. Kieran Jordan, Malden Meehan, and Ronan Regan. Okay. And Ronan lives in Ireland. In fact, I saw him a couple of summers ago back when I was there. Went to a class that he was teaching at a festival. Oh, good. And, and they've got a CD. A, and they have a, a DVD. A DVD. Oh, yeah, okay. Visual you can and, see it. And you can see it. Oh, my. Which they teach 12 steps. That's great. That doesn't mean that you would do exactly those 12 steps. That's, you just you mix and match. Mix and match. Take those as building blocks sure. to do the Shano step dancing. Oh, boy. That, that sounds like the newest revival, doesn't it? It is. And it's being taught also at the Willie Clancy Summer School okay. for the last few years now. Right. And that's it, in Ireland. That's in Ireland in Milltown, Malbay, the first week in Ju July. First week in July. Right. Uh, Mick Mulcairn. Uh, and his wife teach those, uh, and a few others teach some uh, older style step dancing also. Not spontaneous, but they're also the older steps that you can learn. Right. Which are not spontaneous like Chano step dancing, but nevertheless are still down on the floor, batter the rhythm, but are specific steps. Yes, yes. Oh, that's, that's interesting. What else is happening in, in today? Okay, well, in the revival of sets, uh, Interestingly enough, when I was started taking and learning sets in the 80s, uh, many of the dancers felt that the musicians who were not playing for dancing were playing too fast. Ah. And dancers would like it a little slower because the bands, the, you know, the, the revival bands were starting. Bothy Band, De Dan and Planksty had right. you know, grown in the 70s, Alton and others. But... As the revival went on in the 80s and the 90s, people came into it, into the dancing, and they're, they're city people, urbanized people. They like things fast. Yes, yes. So these days, they would complain if the music, music isn't fast enough. Ah. And uh, maybe just because of the name Kaylee Band, the uh, inner... Uh, Kaylee now where you do sets they have to have a Kaylee band yes I, I acknowledge I don't particularly like Kaylee bands yeah because, Kaylee, you're, because why well because they'll have a drum set snare drums and bass drum and like a rock and roll band almost rock and roll or jazz band yeah you know? yeah they would have keyboards oh too modern too modern and as well as a few uh, traditional instruments and then you have the stringed instruments the, the bazooki the a bandolin guitar. Uh, I, hey, you know, you said bazooki. Why? How? Why is the bazooki tied into Irish music? It's it's interesting. It started in the '70s when a couple of musicians picked up the Greek bazooki, and I don't know all the details of exactly how it was changed to use in, in Irish music. Uh huh. Um, Irish music is frequently what called what's called modal. It's not just the major modes and minor modes. It has several of the modes that were used in medieval church music. Right. And so it doesn't always use or have the full chords that you would find in pop music or modern music. So some of these instruments can be adapted to using just partial chords. And uh, good, good musicians who want to accompany Irish music do that. And you can do that with those instruments. Okay. Uh, and I'm not a musician, so I don't know all the details of how you do that. Sure, sure. But if done right, it's not bad. I'm still in a great favorite of those kinds of things. Yeah. Because <laughs> basically, you don't need them. Yeah. If you have great musicians playing the fiddle, flute, whistle, uh, the box or melodeon, concertina, and the Irish pipes, the Ellen pipes, yeah. you don't need anything else. That's true, and it gives it its own flavor. <laughs> it, it does. And if you play like people used to play for dancing, you can actually play all the notes. And you can get in the ornamentation and that feeling that comes from 
the grace notes, gracing the basic tune. Yeah. Uh, and you hear some of the fast Kaylee band dance music. They can't even get in all the tune notes, let yeah. alone any <laughs> ornamentation to it. Uh, well, so, it, And people really like continual battering in many cases, just continual pounding the floor. Yeah. And I've been to Kaylee's where there would be 50 sets on the floor. I mean, oh, my gosh. That much. And you can't hear the music. Yeah, it just becomes a group uh, bang there, yeah. really. Just, oh, my. Yeah, traditionally, Irish music and dance were done in homes, in a pub, small groups, small number of musicians. Pretty fast, you would you say? I'd say maybe. Some would be fairly fast. I mean, it would be uh, lively. Yeah. But in yeah. enough time to dance. Yeah, to enjoy yourself to, at to the enjoy same yourself. time. And also, I'm afraid, in a lot of the modern dancing, a lot of the rural variations were lost or are being lost. Oh, I bet. In Claire, they developed a style and a step to go with their reels. And they, they through the 20th century, they began to like reels more and more. A lot of those yeah. old dances were done to polkas and jigs yeah. that are now done to reels. Oh. And they developed a style for those reels, which is... It, the Style of dancing goes with the music. It just fits, and you can feel it. Down in Kerry and Cork, they love their polkas and their slides, as well as their jigs. And, and when they play reels, they dance. The, the reels sound different than Claire reels. Uh-huh. And if they play polkas in Claire, and they do, their, reels, their polkas are different from Kerry and Cork polkas. Oh, I, I've seen people almost come to blows at dance <laughs> instruction say, no, it's not the way we do it in Cork. No, it's not the way we do it in Claire. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. and you better make a choice quick. <laughs> so it, it's great to keep that kind of stuff. That's that's the you know the spice in it. That, yeah. That's the life in it, to know all these variations. Because then you can dance with the music. Yeah, yeah. And it, well, it's been brought down to a science I mean or an art it's just it's just different it's different yeah, yeah, yeah. Art. it's interesting how they developed uh, uh. well well uh, uh, gosh we're coming at the end of this uh, this segment uh, finish it up here we got five minutes or so what do you think uh, what what would you like to tell folks that they uh, they're in need of hearing well what I would say is one thing if you go to uh, one place and you learn a dancing or a way of dancing same is true for songs and music. It's not everything. You're learning one type. And you have to be open and ready. If you go some other place, they may do things differently. Yeah, that's right. I was talking with my with one friend about uh, in back in Boston. He's from West Clare, from Doolin. And his growing up in Clare, they were talking about sets. As he's, he's a dancer. Right. He talked about, yeah, he, he learned uh, the Caledonian set that they did. He was invited to go down to another place. This, uh, and I'm talking, ten miles. Yes. You know, miles. He said he went down there, thinking he could just jump into the Cal- Caledonian set, but they did it differently there. <laughs> and it's true. You go to Kerry and Cork. You do one place where they called their dance the polka set. You go five miles down the road. They did the polka set. But it was different. Hold it. it was sort of like that must have been that might be descended from the old Irish chieftains where every little barony uh, had a chief and you know it used to be something if you were a king in a country it meant something but the way it came down to Ireland is like it must have been 20,000 kings all <laughs> well, at the same time. And right into modern days of transportation not right up to that people would grow up and never go 10 miles beyond their hometown. Yeah. Community. And that, yeah, and that created these little, uh, little like a little experimental area where they developed their own culture, all yeah. within a small region. A dance master would go in the 19th century, 20th century. People grab onto the dances that he had to bring. Yeah. Then they would adapt it, begin doing it their own way. That's right. Things they take now. Now, are there dance masters left? There are. There are modern dance masters who have come into learning and teaching in the revival. They teach revival versions uh, of the sets. Uh, there has been a, uh, a, a terminology and a language the, which is pretty, sort of universal, partly. Uh, the, the Dublin group decided that they needed to be arbiters and creators of the dance language. 
I mean, uh, Terry Moylan says this in his first book right. because he found people in, in individual areas referring to the same movement by different words. So you couldn't even have a conversation and, you'd have, and have it work. You'd have trouble with that. Yeah. Um, you get over it. You'd have trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So they created their language. Unfortunately, they misunderstood some of the basic concepts of the language of the people. And they just used, but they created their own and published it in their books. But this is Ireland. That doesn't work. That's right. That's right. You can say anything you want. <laughs> other people made other mistakes, started losing, using other language for the same movements. Yeah. And, that's, and then they would write it down. And then many of the teachers would pick up these books and they would read that. And not knowing, not having known the dancers in these areas, right. didn't know that you know, the language is new. But anyway, so they they use that language, the modern revival language, sure, and go around and uh, teach at festivals and summer schools and other schools. Is that in Ireland only or in America? Around the world. Oh, good. Around good. the world. A few years ago, I was in Japan and met up with the Irish dancers in Tokyo and Kyoto, yes. Osaka. Yes, I got a Dance couple of email them. mails from them. I was surprised when I first saw them. I go, well, hey, that's all right. I meet, uh, I see some of them every year at the Willie Clancy Summer School. Well, they come every year. I only go every other year. Well, you know, they usually have an Irish pub there, too. Just about anywhere in the world you go that has a city, there's a Murphy's or a Callahan's or yes. something of the like. That's right, the Hill of Tara pub. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's it for sure. Dublin pub, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And, yep. it's, boy, and that's where you go. It's sort of like the old corner drugstore. You go to the Irish pub to see uh, what's going on in the town, where you find the arts and the crafts and the people and the dances. Yep, that's true. And one of the things I found out first is that everything that you heard about the number of pubs in Ireland was grossly understated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Milltown Malbay, uh, one two-block long road. Uh, that's the whole city originally. It's spread out from there now. But at least a dozen pubs. Yeah. Now, today's it's it's sad that many of those old pubs are have gone under. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people in England too. The old Irish pubs are being uh, not nationalized, but they're made in franchise type franchise. things. Franchise. One of the things about pub licenses is that there are a finite number of them. Right. And you own one, it is incredibly valuable. And so, big corporations, franchises can buy these when, say, the older generation who ran the pub dies and the children don't want to keep it up. Right. You know, they want to go do their own thing. They can buy this. They take the license wherever they want. They can take it to the big cities, to oh, Dublin, yeah. Cork, or growing cities, Galway and yeah. Ennis, and take it out of the rural context. And it's gone. Yeah, that's you right. Know, there's just nothing there. Seems like I see something every every couple of months. You know, oh, this old pub has been around for fifty or sixty years. It's gone. Yeah. And it's like everybody bemoans the fact, but there's no way to bring it back. Yes, uh, one pub license I know of that was, you know, the the children sold. I heard, and I can't verify it myself. It went for a half a million euros. Oh my! That's the license. Mm. Not the building or the ground, just the license to have a pub. Good gosh. Sounds like there's something wrong there. <laughs> that sounds anti-Irish. Yes. <laughs> it really does. Mm. So it's, it's hard to find uh, those old pubs where just the local people gathered and did their set. That's what I, one of the things yeah. I found out. You know, many of the sets have been given names for their local regions, but of course the people didn't have to name it after their area. I mean, they knew where they were. That's right. right. That's exactly They didn't right. have to talk about the Labashita set <laughs> in Labashita. They would talk, they did the real set. And uh, so, in fact, first couple of times I was there and listened to people and watched sets and people would uh, say, okay, let's do a set. Let's do the set. And I guess, you know, what set are they going to do? And I ask, hey, what set are you going to do? And you might be able to say, oh, well, they're going to do the polka set. Uh, well, which one? Well, it, it, finally, it, it finally dawned on me duh, that it meant very simple. They did their set. Yes. The set yeah. they do in that pub in that region. Right, and it's just well known. This is ours. Yep. Yeah, they did the set.
Boy, that's fascinating. Boy, I tell you, you got so many stories, I can't, I can't believe it. You could go on forever. We could do a series of 10 just on what you've known and what you've seen. <laughs> and, I, you know, you've been a dance master for Kansas City coming back here every year. Yeah, I try to get back here at least every other year. It's hard to get back. Oh, you know, that's right. Time, that's so. But I know when you do, everybody says, oh, Michael's coming in. Uh, we're going, we're going to, where are we dancing and when? Yep. And they all know that it's every day you can. <laughs> that's right. I know. And your I, sister, and Molly is your sister. Molly here, she, oh, she's around here pouring coffee somewhere. <laughs> but uh, she, her specialty is Irish coffee. Yeah. And when yeah. they see her coming, they say, oh, could you sneak behind the bar and make us some, uh, some of your special coffee? Huh? She does a good job. But boy, when she says you're coming in, yes. everybody gets ready because it's, uh, it's an event. Yeah, I, I, I've got a story of Molly behind a bar. I don't know what to tell me. <laughs> I've heard of several. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been good. Uh, we're going to do it again if we can. And I uh, sure appreciate your time and uh, taking the time out. And uh, uh, I know, gosh, listen to them out there. Stomping their feet. Is that you they're stomping for? I bet it is. That's right. A little battering out there. A little introduction, introduction to the Shan Nose, I think it is. They're waiting for you to go out there and give them a... A little jazz interpretive dancing, would it be? Uh, a little spontaneous battering on the floor there. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's Jig it. rhythm, real rhythm. <laughs> well, that's good. Thanks a lot, and uh, we're sure to hear more from you in, this, in the future. And uh, until next time, this is Michael Laughlin at the Irish Song and Recitation Festival, year number five. That's a wrapper for today, folks. I'm Mick the Bridge at the Irish Roots Cafe. You can contact me at mike at irishroots.com or send your submission or your notes to Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. And you can always reach me on the web at www.irishroots.com. Call up and leave me your message or your entry on my phone recording machine at 816-256-3360. Just do it today. And oh yes, any donation to keep this show going is appreciated. And remember, keep the best of your Irish heritage alive today. <laughs>